Today we're going to be covering a frequently requested topic, demand marking. In this video, we'll go over what it is, what the top six causes are, and how we can deal with it in the future. You may be wondering, what is demand barking? Demand barking is an attention-seeking behavior from our dogs. This is not necessarily always barking. It can be whining, pawing, barking, howling, or jumping up at us. These are all examples of an attention-seeking behavior or a demand behavior. Now, why do our dogs do these behaviors? The simple answer is, they work. Behaviors that work for our dog get repeated, and the more they repeat it, the more ingrained it becomes. If our dog barks and we react in a way that acknowledges the barking, we are then reinforcing that behavior for the future. The dog will learn that barking works to get them what they want. To some dogs, even negative attention, like telling them to be quiet or go lay down, counts as getting our attention, and this still reinforces the behavior. Simply putting it, Demand behaviors are simply our dog's way of letting us know that they need something, though this may not always be as urgent as a potty break. A big question a lot of people ask is, why is my dog barking? Why are they doing this demanding behavior? And to get to the root of this, we may need to do a little bit of detective work. This will mean observing and tracking when your dog starts to exhibit the attention-seeking behavior. Demand barking can be very common when our dog feels that one of their needs is not being met. This can mean they may be lacking physical and or mental enrichment. An understimulated dog is much more likely to bark or find some other way to occupy their time. This could include behaviors such as digging or chewing to entertain themselves. Just as an example, if we know that after a walk our dog gets very worked up and may bark at us when we settle on the couch to watch TV for the evening, you can try having something like a Kong ready to go in the freezer as a calm down activity and a form of entertainment for your dog. So we've done our detective work. Now, what are some of the common causes and situations in which our dogs are demand barking at us and how can we work through that with them? One very common example that you'll hear a lot of people talking about in terms of demand barking is when we are sitting relaxing on our couch and our dog has decided that they would like to do something. In these cases, the dog will usually come up to us and start barking. They may bark at us, paw at us, or repeatedly bring a toy and drop it in our lap to try and get us to play or give them attention. Well, obviously we want to make sure that all of our dog's needs are met. It's important that we have our own relaxation time as well. Usually when our dogs do this, we will pet or indulge them in playing just to get them to be quiet or stop bothering us, which unfortunately encourages the behavior to continue in the future. So what are some solutions to this? In most cases, it will be being proactive, like giving the dog something to chew before we sit down. We also may want to make sure that our dog is getting not just physical exercise and enrichment, but make sure that they have lots of mental enrichment during the day as well. Here you can see Murdoch doing some nose work. He's a very high energy dog and needs not just physical activity to tire him out, but needs to work his brain as well. Another option for you may be to teach your dog mat work, where our dog has a specific place that they go and hang out while we also relax. Another common occurrence of our dog's demand barking at us is oftentimes during training. This can be either as they complete a command that we ask for them, such as barking when told to lay down, or it can be when they are frustrated and not understanding what we are asking of them. In these cases, the barking can quickly become paired with the behavior we want. So we are teaching our dog by rewarding them for the down when they bark at us that the behavior that gets rewarded is barking as they lay down. So what are some solutions to this particular issue? In most cases, the solution for this will be making sure that we aren't skipping steps. A lot of our dogs are barking at us because they're frustrated and don't understand what we are asking. By making things a little bit easier for them or going back a few steps and setting them up for success, in a lot of cases, we can diminish the barking before it gets too out of hand. If our dog is getting too worked up during a training session, we may also want to work on some more calm behaviors. For example, if you're doing a lot of spins with your dog and your dog loves doing spins and starts getting very excited and barking at you, you may want to switch up to some behaviors like a sit or a down that require less excitement and movement. Another great tip 
is just to keep your sessions short and successful. Sometimes when we make training sessions go on too long, our dog can start to get frustrated and confused and just plain tired and may start to bark at us. By ending a session on a successful note, we prevent this behavior before it even starts. Much like we talked about using behaviors like sit or down to focus on, we can use a very well-known behavior to break up frustration if our dog is struggling. If our dog is struggling and we feel like we haven't skipped steps, we can use behaviors such as a chin rest or a touch that they may know really well when they are getting over aroused or overstimulated to help set them up for success and calmness. Probably one of the most common demand barking behaviors is dogs that bark at us to get us to throw a toy for them. Usually, to get the barking to stop, the owner will grab the toy and throw it even faster than before, which only further reinforces the behavior for the dog. In other cases, dogs may bring toys up to us when we are sitting down trying to relax, eat dinner, watch TV. In most cases, people will pick up the toy off their lap and throw it away from their body, thus still encouraging the behavior for their dog. The dog learns if they put it on your lap, you have to move it off your lap, usually by throwing it or moving it in some sort of fashion. Once we've moved it off our lap, the dogs get to pick it up and the game starts all over again. So what are some solutions to this particular demand barking behavior? One of the top ways we can combat this is to teach the dog an alternate behavior when they want the ball to be thrown. Laying down can be a great option for this. We can also change up the game of fetch entirely. Some of our dogs are doing this behavior because they become quite obsessive with playing games like fetch. By adding things such as obedience commands or tricks that we do in between ball throws, we break up the obsessive and repeated fetching motion for our dogs and change their state of mind into more of a training session that we're both engaging with rather than just repeated running. Sometimes when we're out and about walking with our dogs, we may run into a friend or family member. In these cases, sometimes when we stop our dog walk to talk with our friend, our dog may begin to bark at us. This is usually because they are impatient and they would like their walk to continue. They don't understand why we stopped to talk to this person. Usually in these cases, we apologize on our dog's behalf and often feel pretty embarrassed very quick to move on and continue our walk, which further reinforces the behavior for our dog that barking will in fact work and make the walk continue. Some solutions for this sort of behavior may be to carry a squeeze tube with treats with you on your walks so that you can distribute treats out to your dog and keep them occupied and calm while you're talking to your friends, or scattering a handful of treats onto the ground for them to sniff for. If your dog has a very solid down command or something like a place command where they know to lay and wait calmly, you can also try implementing that where we cue the dog to lay down calmly at our feet and drop treats to them while we stand and talk with our friend. Another top cause for demand barking is around mealtimes. The dog will bark in excitement as they know it's close to dinner time. To get the dog to be quiet, the owner will then usually feed the dog. This reinforces the behavior, and sometimes dogs can actually push their dinner times up earlier and earlier with this method. They're effectively training us to feed them earlier by barking at us until they get what they want. We can also see this behavior with dogs who ask to be let out to go outside. It can usually start with needing to go to the bathroom, but quickly our dogs can learn that barking at the back door means that we go let them outside, and they may begin to bark when they don't need to go to the bathroom at all. So what are some solutions for this issue? The top way to deal with this particular kind of demand barking is, in fact, to just not give them the food while they are barking at you. Sometimes this can mean that we're waiting for quite a while for them to quiet down before placing down the food. Another way to work on this is to teach our dog something like a place or a mat command where they go lay on a dog bed or a mat and we put down their dinner for them. This will effectively teach them that laying on the mat is what gets them fed and not barking at us. A lot of people hesitate around taking their dogs out to go for a walk. They may even spell the word or try to be as quiet as possible when taking out their dog's leash and collar. This is usually because once they do that, their dog will begin barking and jumping around excitedly because they've learned to associate the sound of the leash coming out with going on a walk. The more they bark, the faster we leash them to take them outside, increasing the barking in the future, and eventually over time causing our dogs to bark when we possibly even just go near the leashes in the future. Though it may seem a bit of a daunting task, the best way that we can deal with this is to break the association that the leash means something exciting to our dogs, which in this case would be their walk. We want to practice this in lots of small steps where we do things like touching the leash and rewarding our dogs for calmness or touching the leash and putting it back and never going out anywhere. We can also utilize the lick mat to give to them to help them stay calm while we clip and unclip their leash. We would want to practice this when you're not going on a walk at all so that they learn that the leash being clipped on and off doesn't always mean that we're about to go out the door. When going on walks, be patient and practice opening the door and closing it, rewarding your dog for staying with you and not immediately trying to bolt outdoors. Make sure you don't open the door and let the dog out when they're barking. 
Basically, we want to reinforce to our dogs that being calm equals walk time, not barking at us. Prevention is usually the best way to work with demand barking, as we don't want to accidentally start what is called a behavior chain. For example, if a dog barks and we ask them to sit and the dog does and we feed them, the dog may now think that the behavior is bark, sit, then get their dinner. This is why we want to make sure that we are putting space between the time that the dog barks and the time that we ask them for the behavior and reward them. Wait for a break between the barking before requesting something like a sit and providing their dinner. So you may be saying to yourself, well, that's a lot of situations in which our dogs are barking. In what situations is it maybe okay for our dogs to bark? Some breeds will just always be more vocal by nature. Breeds like Shelties, for example, are naturally more vocal. While we can definitely work with these vocal breeds, they may always just be a bit more noisy as a baseline. It's important to understand that in these breeds, we may never fully diminish their barking. We can, however, certainly help to manage it in the future. Using the tips in this video and working on making sure our dog's physical and mental needs are met, we can help diminish the demand barking in even our more vocal breeds. Another place that we may not ever be able to fully diminish our dog's barking is during play. Some dogs may vocalize during play with others. This is likely just how your dog likes to play. If both dogs are playing but barking as they're doing so, this is just a natural outlet for their excitement. This is also true of our dogs that will let out a handful of barks out of excitement when we come home. This is simply our dogs expressing joy and happiness to see us again in the only way that they know how. At the end of the day, dogs do bark to communicate with us. They're simply expressing their happiness in the only way they know how. And that's okay, as long as the behavior does not get excessive. In conclusion, demand barking or attention seeking behavior is a very common issue that a lot of dog owners face, simply because it's so effective. If you're dealing with this with your dog, you are not alone. Barking is a hard issue for a lot of people to deal with. Some of us have had to deal with noise complaints, or it may just be embarrassing, which makes it efficient for our dogs to get exactly what they want. As a result, we have to try and play detective and figure out exactly why our dogs are barking. Once we know this, we can implement management strategies to reduce this in future, as well as training in the moment to break the cycle and reduce the behavior moving forward. Eventually, while keeping in mind our dog's own individual personalities and breed traits, we can start to replace the barking with a more appropriate behavior. Figuring out why our dogs are demand barking and working through it can be a tough issue to tackle. But with a little bit of time and patience, we can help our dogs be well-mannered, more polite companions.